close it to heart. Okay, great. Welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Tosha Tuhart. I am the program coordinator for a new program um, that is brought to you by Racing Magpie and the Andy Warhol through partnership with the Andy Warhol Foundation. And this is a great opportunity for Lakota uh, creatives um, to think about. So, um, Today, I'm going to talk about this new program, which is called Sinew Fund. So the past, present, and future of Lakota communities are held and led by Lakota visual creatives, which includes artists, makers, and cultural bearers. This grant program is designed to support them and the community by funding collaborative artist-led community-based projects by Lakota Visual Creative um, while in Lakota community. Lakota Visual Creatives can apply individually or in teams to fund an innovative project that will engage with Lakota community in exciting ways rooted in place and land. These projects in our hope are to continue building relationships with human and non-human relatives and enhance the collective dialogue needed for cultural growth and strengthening and strengthening while contributing to the continuum of Lakota creative expression and practices. Um, so the program Sinew Fund is designed to fund Lakota visual creatives who are based anywhere in the United States, but uh, to do projects specific, specifically um, with in and with Lakota communities. Um, because of the importance of place and land to Lakota people, um, the projects will um, have to occur within Lakota communities in uh, current day so-called Western South Dakota or uh, Lakota Makoche. Um, in 20, so this year in 2023, Racing Magpie became a partner in the Andy Warhol Foundation's Regional Regrant Program. And this partnership has brought the Sinew Fund to life. Um, about the Andy Warhol Foundation. So uh, the Regional Regranting Program um, partners with local arts organizations nationwide to make grants available for artists and collectives um, to create new projects, to create art projects in new creative ways and um, include community, um, community participation. And participating in the uh, re-grantor program is invitation only. So it's such an honor for, um, us to be able to be selected to be a part of this bigger movement. Um, so each uh, network program partner, um, they create their own program tailored to um, their, their region specific needs and artistic identity. The re regional regrant program has been around since 20, uh, 2007 and is active in 32 cities and regions. Um, and this work ten, uh, supports um, artists who fall outside of the scope of traditional presenting organizations um, or funding opportunities. So uh, projects have, that have been supported by the regional regranting re organizations have included zines, um, living room galleries, radical seafaring events, virtual reality film screenings, and other public facing experimental activities. Um, and so the program is established to recognize and support movement of independently organized public facing artist centered activity, um, which really goes beyond the traditional, the reach of traditional funding sources. And so we're very thankful to the foundation for bringing this opportunity to our area and for um, our Lakota visual creatives. So the Sinew Fund will provide um, 10 to 15 grants of uh, $2,500 to $5,000 um, each for uh, $60,000 in grant funding annually. And 
So the funding is, uh, the annual funding is divided into two calls each year. Um, and this is to support the seasonality of Lakota Visual Creatives work. And so our first, we are in our inaugural first round of funding. Um, additionally, limited travel funds will be available to uh, ward recipients who are traveling more than 250 miles for their project. And that amount will be based on, uh, will depend um, uh, each will vary each round and depend on the status of um, the funded projects. So uh, individually led project, meaning that an individual um, is facilitating and uh, leading a project may request $2,500. And uh, lead organizers of collaborative projects, um, meaning that uh, they're the lead organizer of a collaborative of several creatives, um, artists or culture bearers may request um, $5,000. And so what we fund are projects that are publicly accessible. Um, projects can include exhibitions or installations held in temp temporary spaces, new publications, a series of events or performances, digital initiatives, public art projects, and other activities that are related to the visual arts. So visual arts based projects are um, key. What we're not uh, funding are um, when an individual artist is presenting their work exclusively, projects that are part of the programming of a, a nonprofit arts organization, projects that are um, at a commercial gallery and projects that don't offer the opportunity for free public engagement. So we're really looking for projects that are accessible to Lakota community and involve um, community and collaboration. <clears throat> um, uh, the eligibility of applicants, um, includes, um, you must, uh, so in order to be eligible, you must be a member of uh, a Lakota um, tribe, either enrolled or have proof of ancestry. And um, you must also hold active community connections. And so the application will address um, those pieces. Um, the applicant must be at least eight, 18 years old by the application deadline, which will be in August, and we'll talk about that. Um, projects can be interdisciplinary, but they have to have a strong and primary basis in the visual arts. Um, projects can't charge admission or other fees to the public or participants. And projects must be completed within a year or less after being awarded and projects must occur within Lakota communities in Western South Dakota. And so that um, does, that could be on or off reservation land, um, but it must be within Lakota community and in Western South Dakota. <clears throat> and um, projects must be submitted by an individual Lakota visual creative or on behalf of Lakota visual creatives. And we encourage projects to happen, or we uh, to happen in community spaces. Um, um, I will tell you, we uh, at Racing Magpie can't host um, uh, projects, but um, if you need ideas um, of where or you're having, you're needing help with that, I'll talk about how to get um, assistance on uh, creating your application. And so projects are meant to be accomplished and completed with the grant funds given, um, which means that this grant is not intended to partly fund a bigger project. Um, the idea is that the grant will um, be sufficient enough to complete um, one project and within the given timeline. <clears throat> so, um, when, we, when I talk about lead organizers, so the individual organizer is a little straightforward, but a lead organizer um, uh, would be basically when you have a collaborative group 
of creatives, um, they'll have to choose one person to act as the lead. And so the lead organizer will oversee the project and they have to play a vital role in the creation and execution of the project. They'll be the contact person for the grant and they'll ultimately be the person receiving the funds and distributing distri distribution of funds um, with, for the project and with the other creatives. And they'll also be the point of contact with um, Racing Magpie and they'll also be re responsible for submitting a final report um, as a deliverable for this um, grant. Um, you are welcome if you're a lead organizer to work with as many collaborators, collaborators and artists as you wish um, in the application. You'll be asked to provide information on up to four other collaborators. That doesn't necessarily mean you only need to work with no more than four. Uh, other collaborators. <clears throat> so um, the timeline that for the first cycle, which is um, now, so the application opened on June 5th. Um, we are in our first virtual information se informational session. We'll have another um, informational session in July that'll be on Zoom and um, Facebook Live again. And then um, in July, um, on the 22nd, we will have an in-person um, informational session at Racing Magpie. And then from July 28th through August 3rd, we'll have um, application consultations, which um, anyone could, be, could schedule on Calendly. So you would have the opportunity to um, uh, maybe ask specific questions that haven't been answered in an informational session or on our frequently asked uh, questions page, or maybe you just want to run ideas by or you have questions. Um, uh, any, uh, any extra time, it's an opportunity to um, figure out those last minute de details and get help. And then so the application um, will close right at midnight um, on August 15th. So you have until 11.59 PM on August 14th to submit your application and that'll be on submittable. <clears throat> then the applications will be reviewed by an independent panel um, um, in sep August, September. The applications will be checked um, first for completeness and then they'll be handed over to a panel to review. And then notifications of awards will be sent um, September 20th. And so each application um, will be evaluated on three um, important areas. Um, first applications will be checked for completeness and eligibility, and then they'll be handed off to that independent panel, which um, will not be sinew fund or raising that high staff. So creative and artist impact is um, makes up 50% of the scores. And so um, the panelists will be looking at um, a scoring matrix that assesses to what degree each project um, fits. So creative and artist impact um, really um, looks at how your project um, uh, is challenging and emphasizes experimentation, risk-taking, is it imaginative and unconventional, and does it contribute to um, the continuum of Lakota creative expression and practices? Is it unique and creative, especially in its artistic process or result? The next area is community engagement. Um, when you think of community engagement, we're looking at how is the project relevant and how is it engaging um, Lakota community? And is it rooted in place and land? And does the project build relationships? Um, does it create um, or enhance uh, the collective dialogue for cultural growth and strengthening? And then lastly, feasibility, capa capability and capacity. Is the project um, a uh, who, you know, what is the capability of the um, individual or lead organizer? Is the project realistic? Um, 
in um, does the lead individual or lead organizer have a um, shows the ability to complete the project within the budget and timeline. <clears throat> Okay, and of course, when we're um, doing that basic eligibility look, we have to ask, we have to verify with each project, does the project have a strong visual arts component? Okay, so um, just to uh, break down the scoring a little bit more, um, I, any applicant, um, the most points any applicant can get is 20 points from a panelist. And so 50% um, will be that creative piece and then 30% um, creative engagement impact and then feasibility and capability and um, that 20% set so out. So um, it's really important that when you're applying for the, pro the, the application that you're um, making sure that you answer um, those questions and take a look at the scoring rubric. And then just to break down um, the panel review, um, they'll review from August 22nd um, and deliberate on September 12th, and then notifications will be sent out to award recipients. So what is a part of the project, uh, the application? Um, there's six sections, um, contact information, uh, project summary, project description, a visual um, support material submission, a bio, and then the budget. So um, contact information is straightforward. Um, oh, actually, project summary, let me go forward. Um, so contact information um, will include the individual lead organizers information, their tribal affiliation. So um, applicants will need to upload a copy of their tribal enrollment or a document that shows proof of descendancy, um, basic contact information. Um, if you're a lead organizer, you want to list the names of your additional um, collaborators. And then uh, within 100 words, you'll have to explain um, your active connections to local the community. <clears throat> and then the next section would be project summary, which uh, simply is, you know, what is the name of your project? Oh, when is it starting or ending? How much are you requesting? The 2,500 or 5,000? project completion date, and then a short summary of the project. <clears throat> so the project description um, is where is kind of a essay based. So um, you have these several questions, but you only have to answer within 100 words or less um, uh, each of these questions. Um, we do ask that you, we highly encourage <laughs> clear, concise responses to the question. You don't have to write a hundred words, but you want to answer each question um, with as much information as needed so, um, to give the panelists an idea or to score your um, application effectively. Um, so you'll talk about, you want to think about you know, what, what is your project, where or what, um, who's gonna be involved, how is it risk-taking, experimental, innovative? Um, what is your project timeline? We have a timeline template that'll show you on the next, um, the next slide. And then um, who is your audience? And who are you, trying, who are you um, engaging with? How are you gonna make it accessible to the local community? And why is it important for this project to happen? Um, so this is the project timeline. It's basically um, a short and sweet document for you to outline your milestones in the project. Uh, we have a sample um, timeline um, connected to the template and I'll show you where to get or review these documents. Um, visual support materials. Uh, this is the opportunity to share um, visual 
aids for your project, whether it's um, your own work or um, items that can help um, the panelists visualize um, what your project is about. You can upload images, um, you can be, uh, provide web URLs or links, um, and then you can also um, upload video. And so you'll have to upload or submit five different um, visual support materials and you can um, submit however you'd like. They could be a mix of the three um, types or they could be all images, all web URLs, um, just as long as we have five. And then with um, each submission, you'll just um, uh, create an explanatory note, less than 50 words about what the visual support material is. And then bios. So um, if you're an individual organizer, you'll submit a short bio. And then uh, lead organizers will not only submit their own bio, but they'll also provide bios for key collaborators. And so you'll have space to um, submit up to four collaborator bios. Again, it's 100 words or less. And um, we do want you to focus on your relevant experience to the project. We are not accepting um, CVs or resumes. And then the last piece of um, the application is the budget. So we have a budget template that is available for you to use and that'll have to be uploaded. But um, basically you just want to, you wanna list all of the expenses for your project. Um, our program supports fair pay for all artists involved in your project. Um, again, remember that if you're an individual applying, you can request 2,500. If you're a lead organizer, um, you can request 5,000. You're not expected to have additional income for the project outside of the SIMU fund grant. So your budget must equal the total amount requested. So for expenses, um, some examples of what the project costs may be or your individual lead organizer stipend, artist stipends, materials, facility rental, equipment rentals, production costs, marketing, reception costs, others. Again, there's no expectation um, for additional income outside of the SINU fund, but we do have the section where it says other project income. And that's really for you to like consider um, I guess as creatives and artists to think about are there, you know, are there other um, items that are contributing to the project that um, you want to articulate? Um, a lot of times we as creatives and artists um, don't think about all the extra that we put in or think of it as like in kind or individual contributions or other income. Um, I will mention, um, I will mention that again, don't feel like you have to add extra income or other income. Um, just make sure that you have a realistic budget and everything matches to what you're asking for. And so um, the application um, will have to require to be on submittable. So the application is live on the Racing Magpie submittable page. And um, if you don't have a submittable account, you will have to create one. It's actually really easy. I think you can sign in through um, some of the email accounts. Um, and then um, you'll just go through the form. Um, again, you'll be, um, your application will be reviewed on submittable and you'll um, be notified um, via submittable um, through email um, on the 20th. And um, all applicants are encouraged to request feedback um, after the um, call has closed. And so um, I mentioned if folks need assistance, uh, we do have the sinew at racingmagpie.org email. Um, I do encourage you to go through the website first and go through the frequently asked questions before sending an email in case the answers to your questions are already um, online. 
And then I also encourage you to make an appointment um, for those consultation meetings that I mentioned. And so um, we have the Calendly link on the website as well, but it's uh, to access it's calendly.com slash CMU. And then my tips are um, we do have a sample application worksheet on the website and I'll walk through um, uh, how to find these documents but I really encourage folks to go through the sample application and draft your answers to your questions so that when you get on submittable you just um, enter in um, each form uh, your answers and have your um, uploads ready. Um, I also um, encourage applicants to make your answers concise and complete. Again, you don't have to use um, all the words, but you do want to make sure you're answering the questions to the best of your abilities. And to look at the evaluation criteria, the scoring um, matrix as your guide to, um, to writing. And then be realistic with your project and really think outside of the box. This is a really exciting grant um, opportunity where um, you're able to take some risks and um, be really creative. And, and of course, make sure that your project is visually visual arts focused. Um, a lot of folks are interdisciplinary and maybe you wanna weave in a lot of different types of mediums as long as your primary um, focus is visual arts, um, um, where, you know, those projects are welcome. And please make sure that you submit a complete and eligible application. And so now I am going to show the website. And so um, 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 I will ask to make sure if you can see my, um, you can see the um, Racing Magpie website, or if you can still see my slides. Did I get like a, okay, great, thank you. So um, this is the Finu Fund webpage. Uh, it's on racingmagpie.org's website. Uh, there should be a link on the main page. If not, it's um, racingmagpie.org slash sinew dash fund. And so here, um, a lot of what I've explained, all that information is here on this webpage. And you can check out um, all the information, eligibility, if you wanna come to a future session, um, how to create an account. And here's where you can access those, doc those documents that I mentioned. So uh, sample application, um, which is in a PDF and you can print this out if you'd like. Um, it has a checklist on all the items and um, has, it, it's really a, a really cool worksheet to work out of. And so um, all of the questions, um, the worksheet for the timeline. And so if you're able to go through this, it'll make the application process a lot easier. Um, let me go back. And then you have the project timeline template, the budget narrative, and then this is the scoring matrix. So this is um, the matrix that the panel will use. So I recommend that you also print this out or keep it somewhere so that you can be sure that you're answering you're um, trying to get the highest points possible by um, writing to um, get a higher score. And so this is pretty, um, pretty straightforward on how um, the applications will be scored. So I encourage you to review this as well before you start writing your application. And then lastly, um, this is how you get to our frequently um, asked questions page. And so um, we have a lot of questions that you can look through. Um, and of course, if you have a question and it's not here on this web page, feel free to send us an email and um, we'll get back to you when we can. So.
going to go back to the presentation, which, um, which is actually just time for questions. So I, and just to um, reiterate all of those documents that are available to you. And so, um, have, uh, I'm just going to leave it open for questions for a second. If there are no questions, then um, we can end it. Okay. Well, thank you for joining. Um, again, if you have questions, please email us and we will have two more informational sessions before the application closes. Thank you so much.